Hello everyone, Jacob here from Right Side Broadcasting Network. So you guys know us for covering live events, uh, such as everything regarding President Trump, uh, the daily press briefings, breaking news of any kind. We have a lot of freedom here to cover any kind of story that we deem as important for the viewer, and we always love to have your thoughts and opinions and questions on these events as well. So with the freedom that we have here at the network, thanks of course to you people for being able to donate to us to keep us on the network. We appreciate that so much. So we want to try something a little different and I made it a personal quest to bring on this man that you see here in this small window. Hopefully I'm, yes, no, wrong direction there. So I of course, I love YouTube since we're based on YouTube. I have a lot of different people on YouTube that I watch quite often. I just discovered this gentleman here uh, a little over a week ago, and it was such a touching story and such wonderful content that I made it, again, a personal quest to have him here on the network to talk about some things that are not political in any way, and to talk about his life and his story and what he does for people, and we feel that it's our responsibility to give such a warm, gentle, kind man um, attention and bring you guys, uh, bring him attention, I suppose, to, to you, the viewer, so that you can check out his content and that you can support him and leave him comments and send him letters because he loves reaching out to people. So without further ado, I told you have... I'm doing an interview here with <laughs> RSBN, with Jacob. <laughs> Stop knocking on the door. <laughs> My mom. Uh, the one and only Scott Hardy, a.k.a. Uncle Mullet. I Thank you so much, man. You're saying such nice things about me. So my way of deflecting a compliment is is humor. And but but thank you for your kind words. That's very nice. Okay. But I thought it'd be <laughs> funny that if you say something nice and then I'm yelling at a at, at a door telling somebody, stop knocking, I'm doing an interview here. <laughs> Oh, why? You guys are going to love this. Seriously, you're going to love it. This man does so many different impressions. It's it's classic. But we'll get to that in a moment. So first, you know, Scott, uh, I might call you Uncle Mullet or Mr. Mullet sometimes because that, that, that kind of has a certain ring to it. Mr. Mullet, um, what are you all about? I mean, how did you get this this YouTube channel started? What what was the uh, the foundation behind it? That's a great question. You know, um, as you know, and you probably found this with with your uh, with your RSBN, it's it's a um, it's a work in progress. And you know, I, d I didn't really have a defined I didn't really have a defined mission when I started it, but I decided to. Uh, I have a couple of heroes, and one of them is Fred Rogers, Mister Rogers Neighborhood, and I really appreciated the fact that he would make eye contact with me and that he would talk to me. He wasn't talking to a viewer, he was talking to a person. And I started to, in my videos, show some humor and funny and incorporate all the other elements of my life. Initially, I had some, I, they weren't negative, they, yeah, they were negative comments. Somebody said, hey, I came here for the motorcycling stuff, not the animal rescue. Or hey, you should do your comedy on a separate thing. Or you should do your firefighting and your EMS elsewhere and start a channel for that. And um, and I wanted viewers and I wanted subscribers, but then I just realized I'm just going to be myself. I'm just going to include my life. I want people to see my wife. I want them to know what my days are like. I want to share my days because we feel like sometimes that the world isn't a good place. I mean, we see some hard stuff. It's, it's a reality. And I don't bury my head in the sand, but I know just just as real is the good that is happening in our world. Every day there's something incredibly positive. Every day somebody does something selfless. It could be something as innocuous as somebody just helping somebody with something heavy out to their car. Those good things happen all the time. They don't always make the news. So now my mission is to share good. I believe that when we see good, we want to do good. And um, and that's, what, that's really, I think, what the Uncle Mullet mission is about. It's always a bad sign when somebody starts talking about themselves in third person. <laughs> well, How well, they will I, I, I totally... <laughs> well, Scott, that, that, that's an interesting point that you make. Um, you know, and, and, and that's something that I was curious about was, um, 
you know, you, you were talking about your work schedule. Um, you're a pretty busy guy. Um, you know, we, we had to wait a couple of days to actually get this to happen, to, to set this up. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, uh, they can read up obviously on your more, a little, a little bit of a background on your story on your YouTube page and your website. But if you could, you could give some insight. What is it that your, your daily or your weekly routine is? Because I know that uh, you do some volunteering at, at uh, a couple of different profet- You know, there's a lot of stuff you do. So if you could just explain how busy your work week is and how much time, little time I think that you have to actually dedicate sometimes to putting stuff on your YouTube for people. Well, and, it- oh, got to go. <laughs> uh, I like I like leaving so you can see how messy I keep my desk. <laughs> this is my, my nanny, my grandmother, and that's a that's a picture of her right there. That's Granny Ann up there, and she used to say to me, she used to say, "Honey, the sign of a messy room is the sign of a messy mind." And I was like, "Yeah, I I got a lot of mess up there." So I I wouldn't. Someone asked me if I had ADD, and I said, well, I think they added an HD to it recently. So I have ADD, HD. I have high-definition ADD. So all the distracting <laughs> things are crystal clear. It's really nice. <laughs> so my, my careers are, they're very much in a line with that easily distracted. My videos are about being easily distracted, to be captivated by someone else, to, to listen to their story, to find out how there are everyday heroes. And uh, these people, again, don't make the news, but they're gonna make my channel. I'm gonna talk about them, whether it's Janet, when I'm doing roadside rescue, I worked as a highway emergency response operator, and now I'm sort of doing it rogue, which is really cool, because I have uh, extensive training in incident scene management as a firefighter, as well as a highway emergency response operator. So I can do a fairly good job at keeping a scene safe and then render aid and and let that person pay it forward, let them just uh, share that. And, and I, I was almost a little reluctant to share some of the recordings because, um, and occasionally somebody said, you know, you're, you really shouldn't, you shouldn't brag about good deeds. I said, oh, I'm not bragging about them at all. It took any good deed I'm doing. There have been people that have trained me that weren't paid, that gave of their time. All I'm doing is giving back. And I believe sharing it is really, really important. And uh, anyway, I'm not gonna get into comments because most, most of mine are very positive. But, uh, this very sweet woman, and we ended up connecting and becoming quite close, really. But she said that I don't think Jesus would would do that, and you know, and would. And I said, well, he didn't have YouTube, and uh, and and the Bible is pretty viral. Just to let you know, it's been <laughs> it's been shared. Those good deeds have been shared with a lot of people. So I I don't discuss uh, religion, and I don't discuss politics, and and on my channel, although I have my opinions, but. I think that opinions and sometimes political alliances and as well as our brands of worship uh, or non-worship, I think they become dividing lines. And I, 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 I don't want those. And so um, so I've got that, the roadside rescue. I've got the, uh, the work that we do here, Hardy Hayes Refuge. My wife has her ear to the ground and many contacts out here. And when there is a hard medical case like uh, Brody, who just came in, he was, uh, he was run over. He's a golden retriever pit mix, male, young, wonderful spirit. And he was in a very bad situation and someone did something terrible. So we see some hard things. I see some hard things as a firefighter when I attend a, a, an accident scene or a, or a structure fire. Uh, but I also see the good and, and how many people, because if we focus on just the negative, like I could focus on the individual that ran over Brody and just put all my energy into that. I could put my my anger and it's there. I'm a human being, you know, I want to just, you want to pull one of their eyebrows out and give them some pain, you know, but I need to direct that energy in a way that's productive. I need to focus on Brody, to help Brody, to uh, make a video about Brody. And then people who watch the videos contribute and they help, they help. So I become the smallest part of that good deed. I just become uh, just a little, like a little gear in a very big machine. God, I, I think what we should do is right now we should go ahead and play uh, um, just a little montage of clips here, uh, kind of from your channel, showing all kinds of different good deeds that you've done, and you know more of the comedic side, and you just being 
Uncle Mullet. So we're going to play that right now for you guys, and we'll be right back. We're broadcasting live right now on RSBN, and we go to Scott Hardy, a man who claims to be Uncle Mullet. Is he a saint? You decide. Roll the footage. You know, lately it seems like we're having so many problems with road rage, conflicts between uh, drivers and riders. I want to do something today to just sort of move the balance back to the positive. Yeah, I'm going to randomly pass out flowers to cars today and tell them, hey, let's look out for each other. So hopefully this will go well. This could be... <laughs> This is Texas. I had to shoot him. He tried to give me flowers. Probably a communist. What, what color do you like the best? I like the purple on that one. The purple? Yeah. Oh, good choice. Hey, no, thank you for working hard. Thank you for looking out for us out there. What color do you like? This one right here? It is free and it's yours. Now these flowers, these flowers are fake, but the love is real. The Uncle Mullet Love. Now, most of you know that I was a hero, a highway emergency response operator for a number of years right here on I-35. So I never want to get too complacent. It's real easy to do. And scene safety is being reinforced constantly in my firefighting and EMT work. Listen, I'm not going to pretend. When the bad is bad, it sucks. And if you're going through a time like that or have gone through one recently, my heart goes out to you. But just know, there is more good than bad. I promise you. Life kicked me so hard in the gut, I didn't think I was gonna get back up. But doing this gives me the power to do that, to get back up. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys something this morning first. Uh, hey, have a good day, and uh, thank you for being cows. Yes, ma'am, you too. <laughs> I'll tell you, this was this was a rough this was a rough morning, y'all. Rough morning. And uh, some bad news. Some, some people received some very bad news today. And uh, just to have something this sweet right now just that means the world to me. Love it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. So much. What, God, bless you. God bless you. What is your name? Anna. Anna Katina. Uh, Anna, thank you so much. Thank you for letting me help you today. Oh, uh, Scott. Scott. Oh, wait a minute. Here, I have something for you. I don't believe this. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, nice. so until we connect again, be good to one another and live to ride another day. Thank you. So it's interesting, uh, Scott, because I've watched a lot of your videos. I've watched, uh, I would say, probably everything from six months back uh, to, to the last one they put up, I think a few days ago or maybe close to a week ago at this point. Um, and I actually found you because I was looking at law enforcement videos. I was looking at uh, traffic stop videos. And all of a sudden, a, a video popped up that said, Cop Meets Hero. And so I was you know, intrigued. And I clicked on it, and it was you helping uh, an elderly couple. Their their uh, truck had broken down, I think. And you came in, and I don't remember. It might have been the the Cyan, I think, that you drive or something that you you towed the car uh, or the truck to a rental place for them. And you had map quested and did all. You know, you went out of your way for them. And I thought, you know, that that it really appealed to me. And I kept watching your videos. I noticed this was something that you do all the time. How long have you been? You know, even before YouTube. I mean, how long have you been really? going the extra mile for people that you don't know? That's a great question. My mom, we're from Tennessee. We're originally from East Tennessee. And I know I, it doesn't sound like it when I speak because I, I didn't marry my cousin. But <laughs> there was a lot of pressure. We're in Alabama, so we understand. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Tennessee is a wonderful place. They're known as the volunteer state. And we, Tennesseans pride themselves on helping. And any trip that we were ever on, uh, particularly my mom, um, if she saw someone, she's like, we're going to pull over and see if I need any help. And uh, quite often they did. And quite often the help that we gave was just really easy to do. It just made, it was such a game changer in their day. And it took so little from us. And then everybody receives the reward of that. 
you know, good deed. And, you know, some people say they shouldn't be called good deeds. It should just be, we should just treat one another like this all the time. And yeah, we should. And ultimately we can't always do that. And we can't always render aid like that. And I tell viewers too, hey, don't, don't endanger yourself. I've, you know, I've got some bells, lights and whistles, some training and incident scene management and how to protect that scene and to protect us. Sometimes the best thing you can do is pick up your phone and say, hey, at mile marker, so-and-so, I just saw a disabled vehicle. Don't be afraid to call 911 if you see a disabled vehicle. That's what our police are there for. And believe it or not, that's what they do most of. They help people. That's what they do. That's right. That's absolutely right. And, and you know, to the extent of, though, you know, and when I'm, when I'm talking about how long have you been going out of the way to help random people, what I mean by that is in one of your one of your videos, I believe we had talked about this over the phone, was the uh, woman from Puerto Rico with her van. Yeah. And it had the, it was a belt that had come undone. So I remember, if I'm not mistaken, you were scrounging for cash. You were trying to find the cash to be able to get this belt. So you had actually helped her purchase it to be able to put it into her van. And in that hot sun, had also bought her a bottle of water, continued to work on the van. And then of all things, the mechanic that worked on the car that lived a few hours away showed up to yeah. uh, to help you with that as well. I mean, it, that, yeah. that's just one of the stories that really stuck out with me. And you also incorporate in these videos, there's also almost like a, a section of uh, sub-stories that are in there as well, just things that pop up. Uh, there was one where uh, you had a, uh, it, it was your boss or, or a fellow employee that had uh, cancer. Is that right? And you can tell a little bit about what you did for him or her? Um. I was still thinking about the Janet, uh, the Janet video. So, the employee or the boss that had cancer, I'm, I've done. I'm really trying to remember right now. I'm actually at a loss for which one, which video you're talking about. Well, I think you're entitled to that. You do quite a few nice things. I remember in that same video though, there was an employee, uh, a friend of yours as well, that needed air conditioning in his car, and I believe for his birthday, you had helped round up the money to be able to get air conditioning ah, in his car as well. You know what's so funny? Mace, the gentleman you just referred to, he's in complete remission. That's great. He's, yeah, so I don't even think of, when I think of cancer, I don't even think of Mace. It's very, That's an interesting story. Um, Mace is a mechanic that, that lives just a few miles from here and is a great man, just, just, just a good dude. And one of my fellow firefighters, Captain Alan Donaldson, who helps train me, who gives of his time constantly. Um, he's incredible. He, as a matter of fact, when they were helping rebuild his house, um, he was already a firefighter and he went through our nation's second largest wild wildland fire, fight, wildland fire event was out here. It was called the Bastrop uh, Fire Complex. And it, uh, it was huge and it was going treetop and it was aggressive and we had to just divert all energy to evacuation. There was no way to fight it. It was just a freight train of fire. And um, and one of those men fighting that fire was Captain Alan Donaldson. Well, he lost his house. And um, it didn't phase him at all, but what overwhelmed him was how many people came to help him. And he, I really think that, and I can't speak for him, but I know that he dedicates his life as a volunteer firefighter because he said in words once, he said, how can you repay someone back? He goes, I, I can't. There's no way to repay them back. All I can do is just give. I can continue to give and, and pay it forward. And that, but that became an interesting event because it was a, a pay it forward type event uh, because Mace gave an incredible discount. Other firefighters contributed. One firefighter called and said, I want to pay the remainder of that balance, but you can't tell anybody who I am and don't mention my name. And I said, absolutely. It, we all give in different ways anonymously. And um, and that's that's great. That's it's a it's a great gift either way. And uh, I'm sorry I went on a long rant about it, but when you were talking about it, I was like, whoa! Oh, and the AC is still working, by the way. That's great. That's great because yeah. those things are incredibly expensive and a pain in the butt to uh, to have fixed. I know. This um, is Texas. It's it's molten lava out there right now, and I thought. I know he's a firefighter, but he's not in bunker gear when he gets, he shouldn't have to be in bunker gear when he gets in his car. <laughs> <So> <laughs> right. He needs some relief from the heat, you know? Oh, no doubt. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and, but, you know, again, that and, and, but again, and in that event, like it's not, 
it's not me. I have this idea and then these other people join in. And again, I become a very, very small wheel in a very good and, and big machine. All these other wheels and, and chains and gears, they turn that. And that's how good works through us, it uses us as, as instruments of good. Well, you talk a lot about paying it forward. And, you know, it's, it's a great movie, of course, but it's also a great message. And that's one I, I always, uh, when I was watching your videos, you, you referenced Pay It Forward a lot. And you also talk about encouragement as well. You talk about encouraging others. So do you find a, a correlation between those two? Um, are you basically encouraging people to pay it forward? I mean, how would you, how would you take those two and correlate them together? Wow. It's, you know, the, the comment section of any YouTube, and I've read some of the comments on, on y'all's channel too, and I was really impressed with the reasonable discourse, you know, because you, you can see the most beautiful, inspiring thing, and you're like, this is incredible, and you look at the comments and you go, really? Somebody wrote that? And it almost angers you, but there's a number of reasons for those those comments, and I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but what I'll say is my family, my YouTube family, they're not viewers, they're not subscribers, they're family. I address them as cousin, uh, uncle, brother. These are, we're family, we're all connected. And um, they have been connecting with one another. They have been supporting one another. They send me letters, I read them. My, our friend Carl, who talked about his sobriety and his struggle with that and how he knew he had good inside of him, he just didn't know how to get to it and he found support at a Reddit group online and a Reddit uh, forward slash stop drinking, I believe. And he also wanted to, uh, and this is very topical right now, he, he wanted to, uh, to really uh, emphasize the National Suicide Prevention Hotline and to know that people have options in a number of different places, uh, especially when they start to feel like they're at the end of the rope. That support is, is huge and to see other uh, members of this YouTube family connecting with one another and helping out uh, it's just, it, it's inspiring. It's, it, it becomes a living thing, just like yours, just like yours. It becomes its own thing. It becomes a family. Sure. And so, you, in, in, that, in that, talking about paying it forward and encouragement, um, your message is basically to let people know that we all, it, it goes by a quote that I remember my, my parents telling me when I was younger, which was, be kind, everyone is fighting a great battle. And I always thought that um, after watching your videos, I, that's one of the first things that pops into my mind is this man understands that everybody's fighting a battle and he probably has his own. And this is his way, this is his way, I think, of, uh, of possibly fighting some of the battles that he has. And he doesn't see himself, I think, and I don't want to speak for you, but you know, he doesn't see himself as anything other than an ordinary, everyday working man that just wants to give back. Is that a kind of a close representation, would you say? That is a wonderful, that's a powerful quote. It, it, thank your parents for that. Tell them thank you. That's, everyone is fighting a battle. That is so true. And it could just be, it could just be the battle of getting through a headache and having to still work. You know, it could be the battle of dealing with loss or tragedy or just the normal challenges of everyday life. And that that's such a great, that's really, really a good quote. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to steal it and use it on my channel. That's really that's right. just go for really it. Cool. Go for it, my friend. No, um, that's it, it's worth, it's worth sharing. It's really really good. But do you? I just, I'm just a goofy old dude. It's it's like Barney Fife with just maybe two bullets. That's all. I got two bullets. <laughs> one in this pocket, one in the other. I shoot my foot with one of them, <laughs> but nip it in the butt. <laughs> just remember, like we talked, you just got to be careful that you don't uh, have an accidental discharge because <laughs> he was he was yeah, right. pretty common occurrence for him. Um, Th so that that really that 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 really is, I think, been my role when I when I've done roadside rescue when I worked with the Highway Emergency Response Operating Program out of Austin. It's called the Hero Program, and that was why the title of that video was "Cop Meets Hero." It wasn't clickbait. It's an actual acronym, and I think we're all heroes. And I think that in these videos, I become the smallest of that hero and all these other heroes shine. And that's what life truly is. It's all of us. It's just all of us. Do you have any particular, I know that you've helped, um, you've done good deeds and done a lot of nice things for people. And I know that you're not one to really talk about yourself, but do you happen to have any 
any any people in particular, um, any memories of people that you've helped that maybe whether or not they're on your YouTube or not, maybe one or two smaller stories that you'd like to share that uh, maybe their their reaction was very touching to you or. Uh, maybe they paid it forward in a way that you know you reacted positively. Is there anything that you could you know just share for for some of the viewers in case they're you know maybe they they forget hopefully don't forget to check out the videos, but just in case just to give them some encouragement to actually go check out your channel. Maybe you could talk about some of the stuff that has more than you know it's stuff that's on your YouTube channel maybe as opposed to something that they haven't seen. Absolutely, you know we especially when I worked I-35, you know, again, now I'm rogue. I can do my own roadside rescue. And if my time allows, I can pull over and I can help and hopefully keep the scene safe and render some type of, of productive and tangible aid. Um, there is a hero, a highway emergency response operator named William Mackin. And Will is a Marine. You don't say former Marine, by the way. He's a Marine, the big, big burly guy got the you know got the the handlebar silver handlebar mustache and he's got these piercing blue eyes and uh we were having a conversation in the yard after we ran our shift and he was telling me how he was able to help this family and how this woman said can i can i pay you and he said no ma'am i'm already paid and you can you, you can you can pay it forward and she said can i give you a hug and she gave him just this sincere sweet hug and i could see i could see will getting a little misty yet i could see because it involved children there were children in this they were they were they, they were very hot he said their cheeks were as red as apples and he got them out of that vehicle into our service vehicles which are turbo diesel uh 3500 uh, ram 3500 turbo diesel with the cummins engine in it and all the bells and whistles all the directional arrows and and the things to, to help and render aid but he, he Will revealed that he had a, a, a great weakness for, especially when children, when he sees children in distress. So this big, in control, burly guy just kind of starts to melt and tear up. And uh, and Will and I got a lot closer at that moment because I'll, I'll tear up. I saw a, I saw a commercial uh, about, and it wasn't even, it was Doritos or something. And it was just like, that is such a great flavor they've come up with. So uh, I'd like to, for me, introducing humor into a situation when it's appropriate, especially when someone is stressed out. This could, it's one of the, it's a very scary spot. You know, you're, you're on the highway, cars are just whizzing by you. And um, if you can not only keep them safe, but you can get them to smile and relax, their world gets a little easier. One of the local televisions was doing a story about me and they're like, some guy in, uh, out of Bastrop comes to Austin and he passes out flowers to people. And I was passing out these flowers uh, of kindness to encourage people uh, initially to just, um, it's not necessarily your job to look out for bikers. It's our job to look out for each other. And you see a lot of signs that say, look twice for bikers. And that's great, that really is. But bikers need to put their head on a swivel and they need to know where they are and they need to cooperate as well. It's, it's all of us together. I was giving out flowers, they finished the interview. I wish I had this on video. I just wish I had it so bad. I literally had, I'm using a pen as a prop, but I had these flowers and they see me drive away and it's a feel good piece. And there's this crazy guy, Uncle Mullet, giving out flowers, making a difference. And as I drive, and you can even see it in the interview on, on K-View, a, 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 not a motorcyclist, but a bicyclist is pointing at a car. Now I'm in between the two of them now and he's yelling. And he says, I saw what you did and I'm gonna call the cops on you. And he's cursing and he's mad at this guy. And the guy has his window rolled roll down. And he goes, I don't know what I did to you. And he goes, you know what you did. And I'm in between them and I go to the angry guy on the bicycle. I say, sir, I just did a piece about this. They just finished recording me. Listen, it, it, give out, a, give a, here's a flower. It'll help you. It'll help you just let it go. And he looked at the flower and they have these long you know, stems to them. I got them from Hobby Lobby. They're Anyway, they're very nice. They're silk. And he took the flower and looked at the guy and he chunked it at him and it <laughs> flew in. It flew into his car and it like hit him in about his belly button. And he looked at it and he was about to throw it back. And I went, no, 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 don't throw it back. In the history of all things, no one has ever used a flower as a weapon. You need to keep that as a memento. Well, the driver started smiling. The guy was relaxing a little bit. His wife pulled up and she said, David, David, let it go. I was like, yes, just like Frozen, David, let it go. And he did de-escalate. But 
I saw the power of humor at that point that even though there's a conflict developing, two people are, one person's angry. And a lot of times when we feel that injustice has occurred, that's when we get the most angry because we want justice. We want to see karma instantly, you know, and it doesn't always happen that way. But on that particular day, everyone left and it didn't escalate. And I at least got a smile out of his wife, David, the angry uh, biker, he at least wasn't yelling and throwing flowers anymore. And, and it all it all sort of worked out. Probably better to throw flowers and throw stones, but I think throwing anything <laughs> at all is probably not a uh, probably not a good idea. Um, uh, <laughs> of all the times to lose my battery on my GoPro, because I leave my my GoPro sits uh, on my helmet about right here, and so you're getting my point of view and uh, as a biker, and um, I'm very pro biker rights. I'm very pro motorist rights. I'm very pro pedestrian rights. It's all of our job. All of our jobs to um, whether or not you're going to have a conflict or not is your ability to cooperate with others and to also let things go. And if you can, if you can do that, if you can, if you can cooperate with others and also let things go, and also just realize, like you said, like your parents said, they might be, they might be having a a struggle, a fight of their day, you know, and, and um, by letting it go, or even just a friendly, you know, friendly wave, like, hey, I've been there, it just takes all the power away from it, and it makes it a good, a good event. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Could you tell me a little bit about the currency of kindness? Oh. Oh, uh, I just happened to have a coin right here. Perfect. Oh, look at this. Oh, let's see. Let me turn it up right side up. There we go. See, so if, if you can't see, it says, see how far kindness can travel. And on the back, we have a tracking number. Follow this coin at unclemullet.com. See now, see how one kind deed can travel the world. And it does have a number there, yes. The, each each coin has a number. So sometimes, if someone says to me, "How can I pay? How can I repay you?" Uh, I'll say, "Oh wow, pay it forward. Here's a great little token. You can keep it if you want, and you can log it in at UncleMullet.com, and you can get these for only nineteen ninety nine each if you mail a check or money order to my PO box. No, um, <laughs> if you don't have money for them, uh, we've we give them out for free as well." But if they do contribute to our 501c3, the Hardy Hayes Refuge, that allows us to help animals. That allows us to get dogs healthy, to, to take them to quality vets and get them homes. And it, that is spectacular. That is spectacular. So um, these coins are, you know, I started this two months ago. And at unclemullet.com, the world map was dark, which was a perfect metaphor because sometimes we feel like the world is a dark place. And then good events start lighting up. If you drop this, register this number as a coin, it leaves a yellow heart. If you pass it forward to someone, it leaves a yellow heart and you can follow the path of kindness. And our world is starting to light up with these. And if you don't have coins, that's okay. You can say something great happened to me. That leaves a blue heart. I wanted people to look at our world, to look at our country, our state, our world, our whole planet, and to realize, wait a minute, good things are happening. Good things are happening everywhere. Now I'm gonna make the news, that's okay. You and I know we can make our own news. We can create our own network. And it's pretty impressive to watch how it's happening. I'm, I went through, I've got, well, gosh, it, it looks like I have just a few hundred left and we've gone through 1500 and there's a new batch, which was designed by Carl, who's awesome, who is part of the YouTube family, just started watching videos and then we connected. And he's a graphic artist in the uh, version two of the wooden nickels. My grandfather used to, okay. One time my grandfather, I'm sorry, this is a long rant. I'll try to make it short. My <laughs> grandfather says to me, son, did you ever get around to it? And I said, no, sir. And he goes, you never got around to it. I was like, did I say I was gonna mow the yard or something? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And he goes, oh, he reaches in his pocket. He goes, here you go. Now you got around to it. And he gives me this coin disc, and all it says is to it, T U I T. And I went, I get it. That's funny. <laughs> That's really, really funny. And so 
I kept mine for a while. And, uh, you know, this is like 1969, 1970. And a kid in the neighborhood, Alan, I said, hey, Alan, did you ever get around to it? And he's like, no, what are you talking about? I said, you never got around to it? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, here you go. And I gave him the coin. I go, now you have a round to it. And Alan goes, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I go, well, it's it's round and it's it's a to it, T-U-I-T. And he goes, that's not how you spell to it. And I went, okay, give me the coin back. You're not a good candidate for it. He was very literal. That man is an amazing engineer now, just to let you know. Very successful. Wow. Super logical. Yeah. So I thought about that because we didn't have the word in the 70s, 60s, 70s, even, even 80s. We didn't have the word viral. We didn't have the word trending. But I knew that was a thing. And other people had had round to it. And, and, and my grandfather also used to say, don't take any wooden nickels. And, uh, but my grandmother would say, no, take it. There's at least five cents of lumber in it. And uh, so I came up with that idea for the wooden nickels. At the same time, I came up with the idea. And this was 2 o'clock in the morning. I'd been editing some videos. I get a little notification. I get an email from someone from the UK saying, I really like your videos. I design websites. Would love to help you design a website. And I was like, I was just thinking I need a website. And I would like to make these wooden nickels. And I want, I want to change the world for the better. Will you help me? And his name is Christopher. And he said, absolutely. And it's happening. It's incredible. That's wonderful, Scott. It, it, that really goes to show that there are people out there that they're, they're, they're almost paying it forward in a, in a sense. They're paying it forward by they're so touched by what you do and how much joy and, uh, um, you know, you, you show such compassion that people have such a, uh, a personal, uh, they have such feeling towards it, I guess, losing my words here, that they... They feel like they, they need to give back to you somehow. And how does, I mean, as far as since you've been doing this, because you've had your channel, I think, for almost 10 years or around 10 years. You've had it since around the inception of YouTube. So I've had mine for about the same amount, like 2007. Um, I mean, how many people would you say have reached out to help you build your YouTube and your web page and whatever else? I mean, anything that is just kind of taking time out of their day, like you do with others, to help you and your wife. Uh, how many people would you say do that? Wow, here's what's incredible. I've had that channel for, like you said, almost like 10 years. I didn't start uploading content till a year and a half ago. I put nothing up. I just had it. And I thought I was gonna use it with my Nana Gladys. And I don't know if you know about the, the connection between Nana Gladys and I, um, but she was very, very popular on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She had uh, many conversations with her, eight seasons, where she said, I love Jesus, but I drink a little, and it destroyed Ellen. It just knocked her out of her chair. And you remember the Carol Burnett shows, you're probably a little too young, but Johnny Carson, every now and then the host or the actors or whoever's on stage loses complete control, sincerely laughing. And Ellen lost that. She lost that with my Nana Gladys. And uh, it it became incredible. And I thought maybe we would put some, some Nana Gladys videos on there, but I wasn't really sure how do we would do it. And there's a great scandal about it. There's another little layer of the Uncle Mullet. Some people speculate that I'm Gladys, which is very unusual. I can't be my Nana. Mm -hmm. and, but they wanted to see her. And I was like, no. I was like, you have Ellen DeGeneres. That's your girl. And I have my Nana Gladys. All the dogs. Are, <laughs> the hounds are being released. Now, how many dogs do you have there, Scott? Oh, we're down to 20 this, down to 20. Down to 20, wow. Well. Yeah, in the core <laughs> there's, in the core there's, we, we gained one this week, so in the core there's nine. Because sometimes I just, it's called foster failure, I just cannot, cannot let them go. They're just, I'm too close to them. Uh, but when, when they find the perfect home, it's great. It really is. So, and we have to, you have to, we have to place them for several reasons. One, it's best for the animal because they get more individual attention. And two, if you don't start placing them legally, you're just a hoarder is all you're doing. You're just the, the quirky, the quirky lady and, and dude in the woods that are collecting injured chihuahuas and, and various fruits. <laughs> well, that, and that, that brings up, uh, the, I think, Sorry, but I think that brings up the last question is uh, talking a little bit more about the 501c3 that you and your wife yeah. have, um, talking about uh, taking care of animals. Now, you, it's dogs and cats, but I've also seen videos of you uh, rescuing raccoons. I believe you gave them to another organization, but you had rescued a raccoon from an attic. 
Um, it's 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 definitely uh, it's very uh, obvious how sincere your love is of animals. I've seen uh, there was a video of a cat that was outside of a Dollar General that I remember you giving cat food to, yeah. and talking about how you know. It, you, you, you wish you could do anything to be able to put it on your bike and take it with you, but you went in, you went right back in and bought a cat food. There was a dog that, uh, two dogs that had escaped and went a couple of miles down the highway, and I think you picked them up and called the owner. Okay. They had that big gated community. Yeah. So, you know, if you could talk, maybe just a little bit about, you know, obviously there's a separation, and people love animals like they do people. There are people that are absolutely crazy about them. So I'm wondering if, you know, what, what your connection is with animals, particularly if it's dogs or cats or whatever it is. You know, I just remembered that was Oreo, by the way, the, the little black and white cat. That's right. Yes. Chill, cool cat had a collar. Well, just to let you know, I kept going back because we, we are uh, friends with Fast Drop Animal Rescue and also Friends of Animals. And they they have a great uh, rescue resource for cats. Well. Uh, Oreo has a home. <laughs> He's, he has a home like a hundred yards from that Dollar General. So, it, you know, it's uh, he didn't really need uh, rescuing. So as it turns out, because I started asking and I was like, does that cat have a home? And this other employee said, I'm pretty sure that that cat belongs to somebody in that house over there. And so, you know, I knocked on the door and I was like, hey, do you guys have a black and white cat? And they're like, yeah, is everything OK? I was like, no, it's fine. I just I've been running into him in the parking lot of Dollar General. And they're like, he loves it over there. He <laughs> loves it. People give him food. And I'm like, really? <laughs> Oops. So and those two dogs, too, uh, are incredible. Christine, Christine called me and she said there's two dogs on the highway and I just happened to be behind her and was able to capture the event. And um can I get really real with you? That's what can we're I, here for. All right. Can I tell you something I've never told anyone on any kind of interview? My wife knows about it. We're all ears. All right. In 1982, I had a really challenging time. I was going through a, a, a difficulty in a relationship and I was young. I had no reference points, no life experience about what to do, but it was, it was very hurtful. And, you know, I, I, I lost a girlfriend and a best friend all in the same day. And I, uh, I tried to just get it out of my head and I started doing some push-ups, and that didn't work. And I was in college. I was in this little, small little liberal arts college called Emory and Henry College. It's in Emory, Virginia, and it's just beautiful. And they had a track. And it's surrounded really by the mountains and trees. And I went out and I ran a 440. I, I ran one lap, one lap as fast as I could. I timed myself and I did it in just a little over a minute, which I thought was a great time. And it was. And I just sat down there and I just let the moment just kind of follow me. And I was trying to say, it's not the end of the world. It feels that way. Just my heart was hurting so bad. It, it just felt like daggers. And, um, you know, I, I've lost my brother. You know, he was shot to death. I've lost my mom. She died tragically of COPD. Um, I don't know that if I've ever really felt such a dagger of pain as I was feeling, even at that moment, even though if you compare it, what I was going through wasn't nearly, but I didn't have that reference point yet. All I knew is I had pain. And I sat in the middle of this field and what I did was I imagined that my head was like an observatory. And you know, those little cool metal things that just open up and then a telescope comes out, but like these little scalloped hinges. And then I imagined that all the stars and whatever goodness lives out there, the universe was funneling into my head, that it just funneled into my head. And what I asked was, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm telling this really significant story and the dogs are going for me. <laughs> it goes, Christine. Uh, and so, stop knocking on the door when I'm saying something significant and meaningful. <laughs> I asked for help. I don't know what is beyond here. And I think it's almost arrogant for someone to try to explain to you what omnipotence is, what all presence and all loving is. That's pretty... That's big stuff. And if someone with a finite mind even tells you that they can describe the infinite, they, they might be doing the best they 
they can at the time, but it's probably not even close to describing what what grand beauty really lives out there, what 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 it is. And I just asked a simple question, a request. I want to be at the right place at the right time to do the most help of everyone around me. That's all I want, because that's when I feel my happiest. That's when my pain goes away. So it's almost selfish. I just wanted to be at the right place at the right time. And from that day forward, it's crazy that how many times that I've been somewhere and it happens to other people too, to where you're just right there. And it's not, it's not me. It's no longer me. Something grand, something good, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, is just using me as an instrument to, to help at that moment. And, and, and I receive the greatest reward from it. You know, it's, uh, I, I don't know if I should have even told you that because it sounds like I'm a weirdo, but I guess I am. <laughs> I call myself Uncle Mullet. <laughs> That's right. And yes, and, and let's actually end that on, let's end it on that note. Where did the name Uncle Mullet come from? Ah, uh, I uh, was a motorcycle safety instructor for 10 years. And uh, part of our training was broken up into two weeks. Uh, so the first week, very intense, blah, blah, blah. Second week, the second week of it, a lot of practical application. And we had these folders. And when I, <laughs> when I, there's about 35, 40 of us in this class. And I hear people laughing. And I was like, oh, okay, something funny is happening. And as, we open, as I open up my folder, there's an eight by 10. I'll send it to you of me. With a mullet, I'm growing it back. Um, and it was my headshot when I did stand-up comedy. And it, it had been posted, it was on the wall at Cap City Comedy Club in Austin. And one of my motorcycle safety instructor trainees, he was going to a show there and he's like, I know that guy, he's in my class. And he says to the owner, can I take this off and make a photocopy of it? And they're like, please have at it. And, and he made all those copies. And so they were like, nice mullet. and. Um, they started calling me Uncle Mullet, and I asked that my students call me Uncle Mullet because, again, I don't want them to think of me as an instructor or a superior. We're all family. And as soon as you get out, if you break some of those traditional roles of I'm in charge and you have to listen, if you eliminate that, there's so much a better exchange that goes on, so much more learning goes on. So I would ask that they call me Uncle Mullet, and, um, and it, but it started from there, and uh, that's, and so I, that, that's it, yeah. Well, Scott, the, Uncle sorry. Mullet, however you like to be addressed, I know you like it. You prefer either one. It doesn't matter to you. Call me Deputy Five. <laughs> if you can't think of anything, just call me Deputy Five. <laughs> Deputy Five, Uncle Mullet, Scott Hardy, we really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story with us. Um, we're going to post uh, some of the information on how to uh, contact Scott. Uh, we'll have it in the description below. Uh, is there is there anything that you'd like to say to any of our viewers or any of your viewers? Since we will, you know, you'll be using this video as well, hopefully on your page. Is there anything you'd like to say, uh, address to anyone before we uh, end it here? I'd like to address you and say thank you for reaching out to me and and uh, and making me feel. I don't know, you know, that support. We were talking about that support, that kindness. Your kindness is extended to me. That makes me feel great. It makes me want to extend more kindness to other people. And just what we did earlier, uh, I don't know if you've got any footage of that tragic, I had this idea I was gonna have the interview with the woods in the background and just things happened. There were there were hornets, there were yellow jackets. And, and <laughs> there was a that, lot of those. Right, but what I really liked through the entire event is it getting, and it was getting hot out there. I made a lot of bad decisions about how to set this up. <laughs> I did. I said, no, this sure, this should work. And the amazing thing was that my wife never yelled at me. I never yelled at her. Um, you, you never just said, oh, this isn't working out. This is we all hung in there. We all hung in there. And that's, that defines I feel like us as a nation, I feel like that defines us as a people as and in, in the world, is that we can work it out together. And it's never the end of the world. Some people will, will make you think that it is. Um, but if you can think ahead, if you can think ahead a few minutes, a few hours, days, before you react, especially if you're upset, the reward is tremendous. And some people already have that. You clearly have that ability. 
because you and you, uh, please, I want to acknowledge your producer. Is it Steve? That's Steve. Correct. He's actually he's actually the on air talent. He uh, doesn't produce very often. If he does, it's sort of light production oh. stuff. So he definitely deserves a big props for this one. I've seen him he, then. Yeah, a lot. You you've definitely seen Steve talk. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm. I'm a fan. I've been stalking him. <laughs> well, you know what? His him and his uh, eight viewers. Will, no, I'm kidding. No, he <laughs> he has a lot of people that watch him. We're very uh, we're very thankful to have his abilities, uh, his talent here, because he's a very uh, multi multi talented. Um, all of the behind scenes stuff is mostly me at this point. Uh, so this is actually right. the roles are completely reversed here at this point. Um, and and I appreciate the kind words again. This was a personal uh, choice for me to bring you on here because. We have so many great people that follow our network. I mean, we have almost 250,000 subscribers, but, you know, the regulars that watch us, which is a few thousand people, um, the ones that donate regularly are such good-hearted people that care a lot about what we do and, in general, I think are just good people because we talk to them. It's one of the things that separates us is that we do try and talk to other people. Uh, we do want to know. We want to know what they think. We want to know what they feel and we want them to be able to tell everybody else as well so that's what RSBN really is as a platform and you're just an, an, an everyday working man just like we are Scott and I think uh, what what really drew me to bring you on was that there is a lot of chaos and a lot of uh, there's a lot of turmoil there's a lot of questions that people have and I know as I get older I have those types of questions myself and I see what's going on around the nation as well as the world and I think every once in a while we need to be reminded that as I, as I had stated earlier, you know, we're all fighting battles and if we can be kind to one another, if we can show compassion and empathy when we have the opportunity to do so and even if we don't, if we can push ourselves just that little bit to make somebody's day better, uh, to me that, that message, that needs to be heard and so we, I, I want to make sure if you're watching please go check out Uncle Mullet's channel, please subscribe to it um, you know, he has a P.O. box as well that, that is always in his videos and his descriptions. He loves to read your letters, um, so it would be nice if you could get some letters and say, hey, heard you on RSBN, thank you very much. Um, but most of all, don't worry about us, just please support him. Um, he's got a lot of subscribers for really only having about a year's worth of content, but we need more. We need more people to know about what he does. And every month or so, we'd like to bring people on like Scott that are able to share uh, their, you know, what they're about and what their message is. And we, we've, we believe in paying it forward here. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, so, Scott, thank you, my friend, for being here. It's so appreciative. I'm so glad you have no idea. This, this, this company, it's very nice to have a platform where we can reach out to people, uh, you know, people that are, you know, celebrities of sorts, right? I mean, you know, your Uncle Mullet, he's a celebrity. So it, it's really you guys, nice. you guys are RSBN. That's, that's right. That's right. You'd be surprised at how many people at the grocery store go, I don't know who they are. No. Yeah. <laughs> No, um, we're very fortunate to be able to have this platform to reach out to people like you, um, and, and, and we're so thankful to have people like you in the world, and we can all, I think, take a lesson from not just you, but of course from each other, because we all have struggles. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, when we lay down at night to go to sleep, whether we're by ourselves or with our loved ones, um, I think what's really important is that we know that uh, you know, our soul is in a good place, and... Uh, you put my soul to good place, and uh, I, I we appreciate that so much. I'm gonna give you a hug. Come here, you <laughs> big fella, you lug. Just give me a give me a Skype hug here. All right. Well, thank you, my oh, friend. We there. will we will talk soon, and thank you everybody for participating. And uh, again, Uncle Mullet, UncleMullet.com. Everything that you'll need is in the description below. So thank you.